All right, here we go. This is Math 7, Chapter 3, Lesson 3, looking at page 219 and on. Just some homework help for tonight. Ta topic tonight is on subtracting integers. And one of the things we looked at today in class, hopefully, was how do you turn a subtracting a negative number into adding uh, what the book referred to as the additive inverse. Okay, they call it the additive inverse. That was your vocab word for the day. And that means we take a negative 9, instead of doing negative 9 minus 5, we turn this into adding the negative inverse. We're turning all subtraction problems into an addition problem, essentially like so, by turning the negative 5 into the additive inverse, add the inverse here, plus a negative 5. So now I'm back to what I had previously, where I have the signs of the same, I keep the sign, I find the sum and keep the sign the same. These signs are the same, so I find the sum of 9 plus 5. 9 plus 5 is 14, and I keep the sign the same, they're both negative, for negative 14 as my solution. For number 4, again I have the additive inverse here, I go to 31 plus a negative 48. In this case, my signs are different, negative and a positive, so I will find the difference. 48 minus 31 is 7, and 4 minus 3 is 1, but I look for which one has the greater absolute value, in that case it would be the negative 48, so my sign here would be a negative 17 for my solution for number 4. On number 6, I have negative 44, and I'm going to add do the additive inverse, so add a negative 41 here. Again, now my signs are the same, negative, negative, which means my answer will be negative, and I simply find the sum. 44 plus a 41 gives me an 85, and I keep the sign the same for a negative 85. Okay, the signs are the same, find the sum, keep the sign the same for a negative 85. On number 11, we already have a subtraction here, but again, I want to find the, use the additive inverse. So when I have a minus a minus, the simplest way to write this is just to go, all right, this becomes a plus, plus. Often when kids write this later, they'll just go, all right, if I have negative, negative, it becomes plus, plus, and there I go. Now in this case, the signs are different, so I find the difference, sure, 42 minus 11. 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, and the greatest absolute value is the positive value here, so I end up with a positive 31 for number 8. For 10 through 12, uh, we have to input a value here. So we have g is 7, so this becomes 7 minus a 7, or if I did the negative, we want to make it to use the additive inverse, the lesson today, this becomes 7 plus a negative 7. If I go through the motions of what I want you to do, and again, those two will cancel out and you end up with 0. For 12, we take the value of f, which is a negative 6, and we're going to subtract the value of g, and the value of g in this case is 7. So I've got to rewrite this as negative 6 plus a negative 7. Is that right? Uh, hang on a second. Oh, 7. Yep. Yep. So I, I shouldn't have put that there. I should have left that alone. Messed up my brain for just a second. Sorry about that. So this becomes that. Now the signs are the same, so I find the sum and keep the sign the same for a negative 13 for 12. This next problem down here, number 13, there's a, word, a lot of word problems. It's a great little set of problems. It's something you can probably expect to see on tests throughout you know, the next couple of years here. They give you a chart with elevations. We have the lowest elevation in the top row and highest elevation in the bottom row. It's important to keep your order in mind as you go through these problems here and look at what they're asking you to do. One thing I know is that they're all asking me to find the difference, the difference, the difference, the difference, which means I'm going to take two values and I'm going to subtract the two values, the first and the second. So in this case here, what is the difference between the highest elevation in Alabama? So I find elevation, highest, and I have two, four, zero, seven and the lowest elevation in Louisiana. Louisiana's lowest elevation is a minus 8, and I'm finding the difference, so order matters here, so difference is there, there's Alabama, and there's Louisiana, 
and the difference is going to be 2407 2, minus a minus 8. If I have a minus minus, this becomes a plus plus, and 2407 plus 8 equals 2415. And that's the difference in elevation from the highest in Alabama to the lowest in Louisiana. The difference between the lowest elevation in New Mexico, lowest is 2842, and difference minus there, and the lowest elevation in California, California is a negative 282, and again I have minus a minus, so I'm going to go plus plus, and I have to do a little math here, and so that's going to be 2 plus 2 is 4, 8 plus 4 is a 12, carry the 1, 2 plus 8 is 10, plus the 1 is 11, carry the 1, 3,124. And these are all feet, by the way, because okay, so labeling can be important. High, difference between the ele highest elevation in Florida, okay, Florida highest elevation is 345. Difference means subtract, and the lowest elevation in California, again, that's at negative 282. So we're going to go plus plus and add those together. 5 plus 2 is 7. 8 plus 4 is 12, carry the 1, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6, 27 feet. The difference between the lowest elevation in Alabama, lowest in Alabama is 0, and the lowest elevation in Louisiana, minus and minus 8. This becomes plus plus, which simply becomes 8 feet is the difference there. Let's move on to the next side. All right, taking a look here at number 14 and 16. Okay, going to plug some values in. So we have a negative j. Well, I have a minus sign up front, and j happens to be 4. And I'm going to add to that the value of h, which happens to be negative 12. And I'm going to subtract from that the value of k, which in this case here is 15. All right, so lots of numbers, lots of stuff going on here. So let's begin going left to right. Here I have addition, so that's fine. So a negative 4 plus a negative 12, the signs are the same. So we find the sum and keep the sign, in the, keep the, sign the same. This becomes a negative 16 minus 15. Now I want to find the, use the additive inverse. So this becomes adding a negative, add a negative. And now I have the same signs. So I'm going to add, use, find the sum. Keep the sign the same, that becomes a 31, and keep the sign the same, negative 31 for that one there. For 16, I have 15 minus the value of j, which is 4, minus the value of h, which is a negative 12. All right, let's start here. 15 minus 4, the additive inverse should be plus a minus, plus a negative. Signs are different. Find the difference. 15 minus 4 is 11, and pick the, sign, the value of the greatest absolute value one. That's a positive, so keep positive. The minus becomes a plus plus, so we're going to add 12, and I'm left with 23 as my answer right there. Let's look at two last ones on your extra practice page, just to get you going. All right, and again, negative 8 minus 9. I'm going to rewrite that as negative 8 plus the additive inverse part, right, plus or minus. So this becomes the signs are the same. We find the sum and keep the sign the same. And number 15, we have a minus minus becomes a plus plus. Now in this case, the signs are the same. So we find, again, the sum and keep the sign the same. I don't need to write a positive. The positive is always there. So if it's not there, it's always positive. So we'll leave it at that. All right, there you go. Hope that helps you get through some of your homework today. Um, and good luck, and we'll see you at the next lesson.